and control when opportunities come. You can just take initiative with certain things and be prepared for when it comes, you're ready. That's probably one of the biggest things I learned in the NBA. Welcome to Learning From Experience, a podcast for college students and recent grads who want to hear directly from alumni on how they've adjusted their lives post-graduation, including personal stories of success, career readiness, and tips for navigating the real world created by the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Arizona State University. I'm your host, Megan Finnerty, and today I'm talking with professional basketball player Jeff Ayers. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I'm glad to be here. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Ayers. Uh, formerly went by Jeffrey Pendergraf when I was here at school. I'm an NBA champion and Sun Devil alumni. For people who may haven't heard of you before. Yeah, yeah that's probably All a right. bunch. <laughs> Talk to me about your career path in professional basketball since you're at ASU. So I left ASU in 2009. I got drafted into the NBA. I uh, played for the Portland Trail Blazers for two years. Tore my ACL my second year. Uh, missed the whole, the whole season. That sucked. And then after that, I uh, went to the Indiana Pacers for two years. That was pretty fun. And then after that... Uh, San Antonio for two years, won a championship when I was there. And then I had one more year. Um, at the end of the season, I played for the Clippers. And then after that, I've been all over the world. Like I've played in Turkey. I've played in China. I've played in Japan. I've played in Russia. I've been to Greece. I've been to Germany. It's nuts. What's your favorite place that you've been in so far outside of the U.S.? Japan has been amazing, uh, especially like Okinawa. It's like Hawaii. How's and your Japanese right now? My Japanese is all right. Actually, okay. I'm, I'm not bad. That's good. I can understand. A Have bunch. you tried learning any of the other languages, like when you're in Turkey? Or uh, I know a little Arabic. I know a little Japanese. I know Spanish and English. Okay, multilingual. Yeah, honestly, and a fun fact about why I really started getting into it: one, you know, to understand where I live, you know, be respectful of the people and country I live in. But I heard that uh, people that know multiple languages have actually a less, a smaller chance of developing Alzheimer's. Okay. And I've had a few head injuries and stuff. So that's kind of a fear of mine. I don't want to have to go through that. My family go through that. And so that's been a big thing, learning different languages just to keep you know your mind sharp. Back when you were here, basketball, was that your focus? Yeah, basketball. And uh, when I came to school, one of the big things I wanted to do was graduate early. But yeah, I was in the, the liberal arts school like with um, the, my focus being on economics here. That's what my degree is in. And what was your minor when you were here? Uh, I have a minor in African-American studies, and I think I'm maybe two or three classes away from a minor in sociology, too. Those don't really relate to your career no. right now at all, right? Mm -hmm. Are there any things that you learned back then that now you relate to your life? Well, like for me, economics was big because I knew just in general, like you want to have an understanding of money and how economies work. Like the whole law of supply and demand is in everybody's life. Even if they don't realize it, it's part of your daily life. You That's make, a great point. You make opportunity cost choices daily, like without even th thinking about it. And once I got a deeper understanding of that, I applied it to everything. Like, how am I going to use my time? Do I want to sit at home playing video games all day? Or do I want to go to the gym? If I stay at home playing video games, I'm going to get worse at basketball. So if I, I want to go and work out. Like, what's going to give me more meaning? What's going like, to, you, you, it helps you put more value on your time. Okay. Right. Understanding like the economics of your time. You can use what you've learned in any major and apply that to your life. That's one of the things that was cool. Like once I got to college, because high school is so general and it's really boring and it didn't help anyways. But then when I got to college, it's like, all right, you can be a little more specific with the classes you take and the things you want to learn. I'm like, all right, this is great. But it's just most, I feel like most 18 year olds don't know. And that's kind of the general studies idea is, you know, you want to learn as much as you can to pick what you want. Thank goodness that I liked economics when I was in high school. Those things that you had passions in or just things that you were interested in? Just things I was interested in. Like there was a couple classes that I took. Uh, there's a professor, his name Dr. Cox, one of the African-American studies professors. He really like kind of made an impact on me and it made me really like want to learn more about it. Cause especially it's not like when you grow up, like in high school and middle school, the, the ideas of like African-Americans is really not explain that much so i wanted to learn more like literature like history so i'm not like ignorant to it and then sociology was just just classes that i ended up taking that counter towards it. i didn't even know it you know but i really enjoyed it and then now i see that applying more now than maybe the other two i'm so fascinated with like how people think and how they they act and do things and sociology is really interesting i'm sure as a professional <laughs> basketball player people really think about your identity you know just being in that mm -hmm. that you're a 
very tall person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We talked about that earlier. Like, that's like the first thing they ask. They notice that right away, you mm-hmm. know, but there's so many different aspects to you. How would you describe how you've grown and, and built your identity from what starts in school and things that you're passionate about to blending that with a career and then being a family man? For me, I feel like I'm like an onion, just like from Shrek, like ogres got layers. Like that's exactly how I feel. I'm more than just a basketball player. I'm more than just anything. College has helped with helped me a bunch to figure it out, but I feel part of me didn't start learning or start adulting, you know, until maybe a couple of years ago. And, you know, just learning some of the stuff that I remember from school, from basketball, it all applies to life. So So the podcast is called Learning from Experience. And I feel like at this stage in your career, you've probably learned so much. From oh, experience. Yeah. Being a professional is just really putting the work in and being okay, failing and not letting that define you. And everybody thinks success is overnight. I've been a basketball player way longer than 13 years. You know, I put in the 10,000 hours of plus to be good at what I do. And that's only part of it. You know, you got to want it more than anybody else. You have to believe in yourself more than anybody else. And then a big thing is surrounding yourself with people that believe in you just as much as you do. That's going to you know, really help you. Uh, patience is a big thing because you're not always going to get things when you want it, you know, when you expect to get it. Um, and it, that's by design. You know, you might not be ready for whatever, you know, God has planned for you or the universe has coming for you. So you have to think about that beforehand and know that, all right, it's not today. Let me work harder tomorrow. And you know, studying philosophy and stoicism has been a big thing in the last year of my life and it's really emphasized those things. You know, controlling your emotions, controlling what you can control. People's opinions don't really matter as long as you're an honest and truthful person. You know, if you don't give value to opinions, they, they don't have any weight. So, you know, you invalidate a whole person pretty much if you don't acknowledge their opinions. I feel like that was just so much. That was a <laughs> lot of great advice because when I think back to when I was a student here at ASU, I'm also an alum. You kind of think that you might sometimes have success overnight or you think when you put that hard work in that it comes with a reward. Mm -hmm. And I think that as you grow older in your career or in what you're dedicating your time to, you learn like there's never that guarantee that that's coming back in your life. Then how have you kept motivated? Well, because I've seen the rewards. It just takes time, just like anything of value, whether it's money, respect, wealth, fame a lot of it comes with time you have to go and you know trudge through the mud first before you can you know wear the all white suit you know i look at my kids my kids are super smart they're amazing it's like the the best thing in my life i love my kids uh, i look at my basketball career the longevity i have uh, there's people that stopped they were supposed to be better than me were better than me they've stopped a long time ago and i'm still playing and it's just i've seen the rewards i worked on my jump shot and at first, the first couple months is terrible. It's like, oh, this isn't working. It's like, just trust the process. Like it's going to work. And then a year later, when I started doing the things that used to bother me before aren't a problem anymore. And then once you can look outside of it and see that the progress, even if it's a little bit, that should be enough to motivate you for more. If you get 1% better every day, in the day to day, that doesn't sound like a lot, right? But every day for a year, that's 365% better than you were when you started. But if, if you worked on it every day, 1%, it adds up. And I just understand that concept that what I'm doing now isn't to better me, you know, today or necessarily tomorrow. It could be six months from now. It could be three years from now. It could be a week. I don't do it to for instant gratification. So you've been playing since you were pretty young and you talked about that community. Has there been people around you that started that dedication of this is what hard work looks like? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like my high school basketball coach, my high school AAU coach, even some of the coaches I had when I was a kid. I grew up like a really angry kid, didn't really know how to control my emotions. And what helped, what helped me was I have coaches that helped me channel it to something productive. And I, I just used that energy and frustration that I was having to just work hard. And it got ingrained in me just to always be the hardest worker here. It doesn't matter if you're not the most talented, if you feel goofy or awkward running or you can't make it, just play hard. And those were the things I got rewarded for doing, not having 40 points and all this superficial stuff. And that's just been ingrained in me. And I think that's, you know, credit to why my career has lasted so long. Even to this day, you know, I'm one of the older guys on the team and I'm still out here 
pushing myself and hanging with the younger guys. And, you know, it makes coaches and other players have to look at themselves like, yo, this guy's done everything. He's been in the NBA, he's won a ring, uh, you know, he's been playing for a long time. And here he is still working like, like I need to eat tomorrow type of thing. What would you tell students now struggling with that dedication? I would tell them for the most part, when people give up, it's usually right before something amazing is about to happen. Like it's just that little bit. And especially if you've already put the work in, like, why would you stop a race at the finish line? Even if you don't know the finish line is, you know, right there, you know, push through it, like be different. Don't tap out, really push yourself, surround yourself with other people that'll push you. That's what I've done. Like when I'm struggling and I want to, I call somebody and they're like, Jeff, wake up. Like, do it. Oh, you're right, you're right, right. Or I don't even have to call now. I hear their voices in my head. Like, damn, if I don't do this, my mom's going to rip me apart. Like, I need to do this type of thing. And then don't be in a rush. Anything. Take your time to figure out what you want. You don't need to figure it out when you're 20 years old. Like, geez, you just got out of high school. Sit down, take some time to really think about what's important to you. And then ask questions. Ask people who know. Ask people who have done something like that you might want to do. And ask them what it was like. Then you can be like, all right, maybe I can put myself through that and I can get there. Or no, I'm not. I can't put 12 hour days in a laboratory to do it. I, that's, I, I'm not built for that. And then you figure out something else. Yeah, because it's OK. The plans change. Yeah, of course. It, I mean, that's life. If you go through life thinking that your plans are going to be exact, you're going to figure out really soon that it doesn't work like that. Because there's like a bunch of stuff that you can't control. Like You can't control when opportunities come. You can just take initiative with certain things and be prepared for when it comes. You're ready. That's probably one of the biggest things I learned in the NBA. I didn't I wasn't the main guy. I wasn't playing, you know, the whole game. But when I got in the game, I better perform or else I'm not going to play for a long time. And so it's just like always being ready. Uh, coach Monty Williams, the head coach for the Suns, was my workout coach when I was a rookie. So we go to the gym four hours before everybody else. We're doing conditioning, workouts and all this stuff. And he'd always tell me, like, young fella, like, I know this stinks. I know you hate it, but this is how it is. You got to work your butt off. You better not complain about it. When your time comes, you're going to do well. Like, I know it's hard. It's not fun. It's not what you thought it was going to be, but it's okay. Just keep working. I'm like, all right, coach. Like, I got you. And that's just how it's been. You're still so young. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe not in basketball. I'm not sure. But <laughs> no, yeah, when right. you think about your future now and the possibilities for your life, how does that extend now out of basketball? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. That's what's like kind of cool and scary at the same time. Like I don't have, I know what I can work on. I love cooking, so I can work on that stuff. I can work on posting videos about it. I, I like teaching basketball. I like mentoring people. I like being mentors. So it's just, I'm ready to just be ready for whatever's coming my way. Yeah, it's the art of saying yes. Yeah, that's really huge. It's such a big thing. When I left school, I didn't want to learn ever again. I felt like I put so much work into it. I was done. Like I got my degree, I'm done. But once you get out of it and you can really start to pick and choose things that are going to help you in your life, you really start to open up to wanting knowledge. Like now I'm like thirsty for it. And it's not even like a conscious thing. Like my brain wants more and I love it. And like, yeah, I'm young. Like in life, I'm super young. Basketball career, I'm almost done. But it's just how can I keep that thirst satiated like enough to where I feel like I'm growing and start cutting things out that don't give me that feeling. You know, that's why I'm like, I'm just now figuring out this adulting stuff. When, you know, you think your 20s, you would figure it out. So when your 30s, you're a OK. No, 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 no. It's like <laughs> also probably being a parent changed that, too. Well, yeah, you have to, because then it's a, you got to think, you know, children learn so much from like osmosis. So you could tell them certain things and what's good, what's right. But most of what they learn from is like by example and like what they see, whether it's you, their friends, you know, their teachers, whoever they're around, you know, they're like sponges. They're going to soak all of this stuff up. And, you know, I've seen my kids do things that I'm like, oh, I do that. Like, I've never told them to do that or they, you know, they watch you. Like my son, when when I'm at home, I don't have a shirt on. Like I'm always, I'm just basketball shorts, relaxing. My son now, that's all he does. He walks, as soon as he walks in the house, that's like the first thing he takes off is his shirt. When he's working out, just he'll work out three minutes in. He's like, so they know he's like seven, right? Yeah, he's seven. Yeah, yeah my son's seven. So funny. And he he's like walks in the gym. We work out. We're training. He's like, Dad, it's so hot in here. I'm like, <laughs> yo, you know these gyms are like freezing. And he's just, he takes his shirt off, just throws it to the side, and it's like that's my son. It's like, OK, so then you start being more aware of the things you say, how you talk, you know, the positive energy you have. If you're around people that are studying all the time, 
you're going to study all the time. Exactly. If you're around people that, you know, are working hard all the time, you might start thinking, oh, I need to work a little harder. Mm -hmm. So if you're around people that are pretty positive, you're going to be positive too. That's going to have a positive impact too. So if there are Sun Devils out there that want to connect with you, maybe learn from your experience even more, hear that great advice that you just shared, but a little bit more personally, um, how can they connect with you? Uh, They can message me on my Instagram. That'd be a good way to do it. They can reach out to the college. And if they want, the college can reach out to me too, and we can do something like that. I'm, I'm one of the biggest things I want to be available to whoever wants the advice, who wants to listen. Thank you so much for your time today and sharing everything that you've learned from experience. I feel like I've already learned so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. To hear more alumni advice, head to our episode page wherever you listen to podcasts or check out the college's YouTube channel or visit thecollege.asu.edu slash LFE podcast. See you next time.